Two decades have passed, but like so many people, I can still clearly remember where I was when 9-11 happened. I was on duty. I was running a planning shift for DW when four civilian airplanes were hijacked and turned into weapons. These pictures, the collapsing twin towers, the fear, the screams, the people, the dust, all of that unfolding in real time on television. Very soon, attention switched to one country, Afghanistan. Why? Because of Al-Qaeda. The terrorist network had established its main base in Afghanistan and was identified as the perpetrator of 9-11. So to hunt down Al-Qaeda, the United States and its allies invaded Afghanistan, which back then was ruled by the Taliban regime. And now, 20 years later, international forces have withdrawn, defeated, and the Taliban are back in power. And this, of course, poses one burning question. Will Afghanistan once again become a safe haven for terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda? Uh, we've been trying to drain Al-Qaeda support for the past 20 years. But every time we use a drone that uh, kills civilians, we're contributing to sympathy and support for Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda definitely um, never disappeared from the global picture. I'm very convinced that they, once they have established um, a stronghold in, again, Afghanistan with the support of Taliban, they will again try to reach out on the global scale. I'm DW's Sandra Petersmann and I have been reporting on Afghanistan for the past two decades. Afghanistan in 2001 had already suffered two decades of consecutive war. First, there was the Soviet occupation of the 1980s. Then there was the civil war, very bloody, of the 1990s. And it was precisely this civil war that brought the Taliban to power and also led to Al-Qaeda establishing its main base in Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda always had the a goal to uh, aim geopolitically, so they wanted to uh, establish a worldwide caliphate, whereas the Taliban was a regionally focused group and uh, concentrated on Afghanistan especially, both organizations being jihadist groups but with a different focus. A very um, early agreed that they could reach their aims more successfully when they cooperated. I think it was a marriage of convenience. Uh, Al-Qaeda was looking for safe haven or sanctuary. The Taliban were looking for, you know, military assistance and support, and Al-Qaeda had that in droves. It had the expertise, it had battle-hardened fighters, um, it had, uh, you know, bomb makers and, and uh, commanders. So from all that we know, Al-Qaeda had attacked Western entities from Afghanistan before 1998. Two U.S. embassies in Africa were attacked, the one in Kenya and the one in Tanzania. And we did see retaliatory strikes after that from the U.S. hitting targets in Afghanistan. But then, of course, 9-11 was an entirely different level. 9-11 put al-Qaeda on a different scale. In fact, it, it catapulted them into a different stratosphere in how we assess terrorist groups. This was a highly complex, well-planned, a spectacular terrorist attack that shook the United States to its core and, in my mind, fundamentally changed the way we look at global security. The U.S. government demanded that the Taliban hand over al-Qaeda's leadership and the Taliban refused. And then on October 7, 2001, barely a month after the 9-11 attacks, the first U.S. bombs dropped on Afghanistan and foot soldiers followed. What happened with the beginning of the U.S. invasion in Afghanistan was a very quick regime change. The Taliban regime was toppled, but went into hiding. And with it into hiding went al-Qaeda's leadership. Bin Laden fled. Many of his top lieutenants fled, went into Pakistan where uh, they, they received sanctuary. And throughout, you know, 2001 until Bin Laden's death, 10 years later in 2011, um, Al-Qaeda continued to launch attacks. You had involvement in the Madrid train attacks in 2004, the following year, the 7-7 bombings in London. In the past 20 years, Al-Qaeda hasn't stopped with terrorist attacks. They were just on a much smaller scale and not emanating from Afghanistan. They emanated from different countries as Al-Qaeda has diversified, metastasized and become even more a network of independent elements. It was able to decentralize and it was able to develop affiliates and branches worldwide from the Levant to affiliates 
uh, all over the world, frankly, North Africa down to Southeast Asia. Especially in Afghanistan, we saw a lot of suicide attacks against international coalition forces and against the civilian population, which has been and continues to be a major victim of terror. The situation now, 20 years later, is the Taliban are back in power more forcefully than ever before. They really control the entire country now. And from all that we know, Al-Qaeda's core leadership is still in Afghanistan and Taliban and Al-Qaeda haven't severed ties yet. The relationship with the Taliban is very much back to the roots of 2001. They um, pledge a sort of allegiance to the Taliban. They are fiercely loyal to the Taliban and we can expect uh, the Taliban answering in the same ways. The Taliban always refused to distance themselves from Al-Qaeda. And I'm pretty sure now that they established control over Afghanistan, they will, to a certain degree, talk about not supporting Al-Qaeda, but uh, they will do so on a factual level. I think it behooves the Taliban to prevent Al-Qaeda from using Afghanistan as uh, you know, a hub or a staging ground for transnational terrorist attacks. Uh, the Taliban's been waiting 20 years to reclaim power. They've finally done it. If Al-Qaeda you know, launches attacks from Afghan soil, the West is going to do something about it, you know, something that could end up in the Taliban once again, you know, being usurped. Uh, and so I think the Taliban wants to avoid that at all costs. The question in my mind becomes, if Al Qaeda is determined to regenerate and attack the West, can the Taliban control them? And let's not forget, Al Qaeda is not the only terror outfit present in Afghanistan. There is also ISIS-K, the so-called Islamic State. And if you think of that massive suicide attack at Kabul airport during the evacuation campaign, that was claimed by the Islamic State. At least on a moral level, um, the perceived Taliban victory uh, in Afghanistan has a, a very strong impact on jihadist movements worldwide. Um, at least from their point of view, what they see is that a um, much less sophisticated group of uh, convinced um, believers, to, to uh, take their turns, um, they succeeded in repulsing the most advanced military of the world, the United States. And this is happening at the same time the West is pivoting from counterterrorism to great power competition. And so uh, between, between that pivot to look at the rise of China, uh, resurgent Russia, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, there's just going to be fewer resources dedicated to counterterrorism right at the time that many groups are preparing to surge. There are estimates right now uh, that the global jihad jihadist movement writ large is about uh, over 200,000 fighters, which would make it approximately four times the size as it was on 9-11. Uh, the United States and its coalition partners, its allies, have done a really good job at eliminating individual jihadi leaders. Uh, but these decapitation strikes have amounted to tactics without a strategy. Uh, I do think, uh, depending on what happens in Afghanistan, what happens in Syria, what happens elsewhere, uh, that we could see attacks in the future that look a lot like uh, what we saw in Paris in November 2015 uh, at the Bataclan or Brussels in March 2016 or you know, vehicle attacks like we've seen in Nice and Berlin. The central question is uh, which area of operations they're focusing in. Um, I think uh, for the uh, next time in the foreseeable future, they will focus on the Asian area because uh, they have to reestablish their global outreach, but they will not stop to plan international attacks against Western targets as well. We've been trying to drain Al-Qaeda support for the past 20 years, uh, but every time we use a drone that uh, kill civilians, we're contributing to sympathy and support for Al-Qaeda. Now, if you look at the situation in Afghanistan at the moment, uh, the U.S. is bereft of uh, a robust intelligence footprint there. The war against terror was not successful the way it was conducted. The war against terror was counterproductive and in the end led to more terror. In the end, it helped the Taliban to return to power. If ISIS-K, as many suspect, continues to be an issue, and if the U.S. continues to launch over-the-horizon counterterrorism operations, uh, we're likely to see more collateral damage. And we're likely to see that collateral damage translate into more support for jihadi groups. Let's not view everything as just a militaristic problem. Let's not combat terror with weapons only. It needs a different approach. It needs diplomacy. It needs development. It needs dialogue.